You join me at the Lesser Flamingo Enclosure at WWT Slimbridge because this year is a very special anniversary, not just for Slimbridge but for all of WWT because it's the 60th anniversary of us having flamingos in the Living Collection. And Peter Scott, when he put the Living Collections together, was really keen to display the different types of flamingo because of their unique habitats and unique adaptations they have compared to other species of bird. For those of you that are lifelong members of the Trust and you have your older copies of Wildfowl, the Trust's journal, you might have the edition from 1961 which talks about when the flamingos first arrived at Slimbridge. And the reason I've got the lesser flamingos behind me today is because some of those birds that you can see are the original animals that arrived 60 years ago. And there is an amazing photograph of them. In the middle of the book, you can actually see some of our original lesser flamingos in black and white print and behind us in the flocks. The first species to arrive at WWT were the greater flamingos, the lesser flamingos and the Chilean flamingos. And from those original flocks, we've been able to breed more birds and then populate our own centres and other centres for living collections as well. Caribbean flamingos followed, and then our very special Andean and James's flamingos came after that. So you're very privileged not only to be able to see the diversity of this amazing group of birds, but also a real slice of living history as to why we've got these birds here in the first place. Why then do we have all of these different species of flamingo here at WWT Slimbridge? When Peter Scott put the living collections first together, he wanted to show all of the relationships between the ducks, geese and swans and the other water birds. And he originally thought that flamingos were very closely related to the ducks, geese and swans. And I have raided through my nerdy bird collection once again. And here is an old guidebook from Slimbridge. And you can see flamingos right at the bottom and then all of the other species of birds are radiating out from them. So this is Peter Scott's artwork and he put the flamingos as the origins of the ducks, geese and swans. We now know that's not the case. And in fact, the flamingos are actually incredibly closely related to grebes, another water bird, but also pigeons as well. Two species that you can still see at a WWT centre. If you'd like to know how to look into the flocks and spot some of these really old birds, we can base that on their colour because flamingos accumulate the colour over the course of the years that they are alive. The longer the bird lives for, the more colour it accumulates and the brighter pink it can become. So look at the flamingos as they go into the breeding season, about end of spring, start of summer, and it's those most brightest, vibrant birds that are potentially the oldest birds, some of the original birds from the 1960s that you can still see today.